afternoon, everybody. Uh, again, we apologize for the technical difficulties. Wanted to make sure that we had everything going uh, before we got too deep into the program. But again, we're going to give you guys just a few seconds to log on live, and we'll be starting promptly. Thank you guys for having patience with us. Thank you, thank you guys, thank you guys. Again, man, we're gonna say this all over again. It's great to have you guys in the building. You should know us all by now, but if you don't, to my right and your left is Minister Therese Jordan, and to my left and your right is Pastor Wardell Dyson. Well, these, young, these young men <laughs> have been with us since the beginning. That's that was right. way back in March at the onset of the right. pandemic. Now we're at the end of August. Whoa. Now we're at the end of August. <laughs> <laughs> and we're still going. That's right. And uh, so that lets you know that it's not going to be just based on Corona, but we did want to encourage you guys. That's what kind of started it. And I uh, wanted to encourage everybody while we're going through it. It was something new that most of us had never been through anything like that in our lives. So it, yeah. it just burnt. It, it went from that and it spawned yeah. on into uh, something that seemed like it's almost necessary. It's weird. Yeah. And I yeah, want to do it. It's, yeah. uh, it helps us. You know, a lot of us not able to do church the way we normally would like. A little bit, not having all your members, you know, all the different take you doing it live allows, allows the opportunity for yes, we can do it on our own, but this allows the opportunity for somewhat of fellowship. Yes, somewhat of fellowship, uh Christian minded, like minded people studying the word and wanting to relate that word to God's people. So that's just what we're trying to do, man. Uh so we hope the way we've been bringing it has been a way that's been beneficial and easy to follow. It's, it's our way of doing it. Oh, yeah. We use social media and uh, we use the technology that we have at, at, our, at our disposal to try to make it easy for you guys to follow. So if you haven't, haven't had an opportunity to download the Bible app, please download the Bible app and you can follow along with our lessons as we post them on Facebook throughout the week and then you'll know what we're going to be talking about on Mondays. Um, right now, we're going to start pushing our time back from the original 2 p.m. to 3 p.m. Like I said before, uh, Pastor Wardell Dyson just started a job here locally, and uh, he gets off at 2, and he still wants to make sure we continue doing the Real Talk King discussion. Yes, yeah, sir. Uh, <laughs> so here, man, uh, I know a few minutes ago, uh, Reverend Lawrence Jackson was on. I don't know if he's gotten a chance to re-log on since we ended that particular broadcast and started another one, but if he is on, he'll be getting on that afternoon, you too, Rev. Um, please, uh, please, you guys, uh, I know we're trying to get used to our new schedule, so, um, for some of you who like to be on live with us, please comment. We'll see your comments in real time. If you have, please 
submit the questions as well. We'll do our very best to answer them. And if you just want to just say what's up, shout out, amen, whatever you want to do, do that in the comment field and we'll to Real Talk Kingdom discussion. If you wouldn't mind doing us a favor, please share our particular broadcast Facebook pages. Just help everybody get to see what's going on and to hear a positive word from you. And right now, we have the caption at the end. Yeah. This is not the author of any of this wrongdoing, any of this, the bad things, anything that's going wrong that is not of him. He's a, a good God. That's right. And, uh, Everything from him is good. Uh, so a lot of things that we go through as a people, as a world, as a country, as a nation, um, that is brought on by mankind. And uh, so sometimes God don't just jump right in. He allows us to waddle through our mess That's right. and, uh, and pick ourselves up by a bootstrap by calling on Jesus' name. Yes. Uh, and if we don't do that, sometimes we really don't get a chance to hear from God. And you'll get a chance to listen to this particular lesson today and get a better understanding we what it is to hear from God, listen to God, ask God, and how, how he goes about answering prayers, because you'll get to understand his character. And the way that when we don't understand uh, the time that he moves in, hopefully today's lesson will help kind of yes. under, make you understand a little bit clearer. Just the personality, the last one we was talking about, pray big things, we had two parts to that. And today is so funny. You want to know what is God doing, and the only way you're going to find that out is through prayer as well. That's so, right. Ain't that something? It just always ties itself in together. That's uh, right. Never really knowing, never really knowing what we're going to talk about, but it always seems to tie itself in yes, together. Sir. So, yes, God, thankful, thankful, thankful for that. Um, if you don't know, if this is your first time watching Real Talk, uh, you may see us hold up these Real Talk signs or just to uh, let everybody know that we are in agreement with one another or with one of the speakers. Uh, we may want them to dive in a little deeper, or we want to just jump in and interject these real talk signs. That is what they're here for. Yes, so uh, it's not a church fan, but hey, it could be multifunctional <laughs> if you want to. So if you can fan with it, I guess you could. It will work. So uh, to, again, for those who are following along in the Bible app, you can read along with us as we do it. The way we do the show, we read the particular devotions which will be day one, day two, day three. And this was one that was five days, so we're going to do this one all the day. Uh, when we have those ones that are a little longer, like seven days, we typically have been chopping them down into two days. But we're going to do this one in one day. Uh, I think it's easy enough to do in one day, so that's the plan. Uh, give me one second to make sure this is... I'm up live again, and we're going to be ready to start. Just a second, just a second. I wanted to make sure I'm able to follow you guys live. And uh, it had kicked out on me, so let's see for a second. My brother Gerard Miles is watching. Appreciate that, man. Thank you for tuning in to Real Talk Kingdom Discussions. Uh, before we start this particular lesson, though, we want to start off with a word of prayer, and I'm going to ask Pastor Waddell Dyson to lead us in the opening word of prayer. Father God, we come to you, Lord, with praise and thanksgiving in our hearts. Father God, thank you, Lord, for another opportunity, Lord, to uh, proclaim your word, Lord, to your people. Father God, we ask that. As always, Lord, we ask the Holy Spirit, Lord, to reign in this place, Lord, that we may be able to uh, come to the Word, Lord, and, and, and teach the Word, Lord, to your people. And Father God, I ask that you bless each panelist, Lord, that your Holy Spirit may reign within them, Lord, throughout this lesson. And Father God, we ask that you bless each viewer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, thank you. Thank you, Pastor, for that. Uh, without further ado, one thing, real quick, before we jump in. If you hadn't had an opportunity to do so, please go and like our Real Talk with Martin and Gordon Facebook page. 
our hope is that we start coming from our page live directly instead of my individual Facebook page. That's the hope, but we want to get more members and more followers on that page before we start doing so. So please go and like that page and as well, go and subscribe to our YouTube channel on the Real Talk with Martin and Gordon. Thank you, thank you. Without further ado, what is God doing? Day one, listening. I'll catch day one, day two, day three, day four, day five. Nice. We'll do it like that. So day one is listening. The concept of listening to God can be confusing. If you look through the Bible, you see a few isolated examples of God showing up and speaking through impossible to, impossible to miss, excuse me, I got it, through impossible to miss supernatural means, a burning bush, a thunderous voice, a talking donkey. While I think we'd all love for God to be this obvious when he speaks to us, it's actually a very rare occurrence throughout history. More often, we see God speaking much softer, much more subtly. A perfect example is the story you are about to read. The Old Testament prophet Elijah was at the end of his rope, tired, fed up, ready to quit. So God came to have a conversation with him. And while Elijah is hiding out in a cave in the middle of nowhere, this crazy series of events unfolds. From inside the cave, Elijah witnesses all sorts of natural disasters. The wilderness, the wilderness is being ripped apart. And then he hears the sound of a gentle whisper. And that's when he steps outside ready to hear from God. If I were Elijah in that cave and I knew God was coming to speak with me, I would probably have expected him in the big and obvious. When fires and earthquakes are raging all around me, I think there's the all-powerful creator of the universe. But God prefers to speak to us in whispers. He is gentle with us. More than that, we now live with the advantage of having God himself and the Holy Spirit living within us. That was key. That's mm -hmm. right. He said, more than that, we now live with the advantage of having mm -hmm. God himself as the Holy Spirit living within us. That's why it's very important for you to ask God to have the Holy Spirit live within you because the Holy Spirit is really our compass. And that's right. our God and it's our direct representative of the Trinity, which is God. And it represents God. And the Holy Spirit is just like having God right on your shoulder. Amen. We can hear from God because he's already right there, closer than we realize. But here's the problem. If God speaks in whispers, we're going to have to get quiet. We've talked about that before. Mm -hmm. The chaos, the clutter, we got to get rid of that. We have to get quiet if we expect to hear him. Could you hear a whisper over the constant music in your earbuds? The insane schedule you keep? Or the constant barrage of screens? When is the last time you slowed down, got quiet, and really listened for that gentle whisper of God? Mm. After you read this passage, take a couple minutes to give it a try. So before I go to the particular scriptures that support it, some of the key things that I pulled from that was that amidst all of the chaos, the noise, and the clutter that's in our lives, God still prefers to whisper gently to us. There have been a few rare occurrences when he's come, he's, he's, He's appeared bold, loud, thunderous, but that is typically not the way he prefers to interact with us and speak with us. Uh, it also, uh, another thing that I put was do not expect a loud, thunderous, monstrous voice. Expect a gentle whisper, and we must get quiet to hear from God. So before I read the supporting scriptures, I want these young men, they have something to expound on. They can't have the floor right now. I love uh, Psalms 91 when it says he who dwells in a secret place uh, of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. So that means that every now and then we have to uh, get to that secret place in our life in order uh, to where we hear from God. I remember uh, an old old time uh, saints used to say, uh, I, 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 I go to my prayer closet. And I, and, I, and I go in there and I shut the door. And then I just go get down on my knees and, and, and get in front of God and get in God's face. And then I'll be able to hear from God. So, I mean, God, just like uh, Hard said earlier, he can't, he can't come to us throughout all the noise and the cloud and all that kind of stuff. Sometimes we have to get to that place to where 
we we we're, we're quiet in a quiet moment, and we can speak to and, and we can speak to God, and God can uh, in turn speak to us. Amen. That's Amen. right. That's right. Um, this is a it's it's very important to know that the relationship with God is very important that you stay tuned into that. That's right. Just as important as you stay tuned in to your favorite TV show mm -hmm. every Wednesday night. Okay, you have to make. Um, room for God in his um, direct line of inspiration so that you can get the correct guidance in your life. The, 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 the voice of God will come however he think is good enough to get your attention. That's right. However, you could be on a tr uh, trial and tribulation um, act, right? So you, you're kind of, you're a little altered a little bit. But the important thing about it is you know within yourself that the Lord told you to be uh, be courageous and, 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 and have the confidence in him to know that he's right there by your side all the time. So what, whatever you're going through in your life, don't allow the trials and tribulations to clutter your uh, mental. And, and what you're doing, you're pushing out all the um, avenues of, of God to speak through you, to you um, about your uh, purpose, your, your plan, and everything you're trying to do. We, we got to always remember, the more comfortable we get in him, the more we'll neglect the fleshful things in this world. That's right. See, if we uh, attach ourselves to the things in this world, we deprive ourselves from the voice of the Lord. So the thing is, every day we need to make sure that we are in tune with God. Never let a day go by. And the only thing on your mind is what you're doing, how far you got. The first thing that you need to get straight is the number one priority. Uh, has God spoke to me this morning? I need to get some, I need to give me some alone time and concentrate my mind right. on what right. God wants me to do. Right. That's right. Amen. Amen. You gotta keep in mind there are different ways and different methods for each of us to find that alone time with That's God. Right. Some That's of right. us do it in walking. Some of us do it, like they say, some people can't be still, mm -hmm. and so they have to walk, they can drive. Some people, whatever it is that allows your mind to focus on God, because when you walk in a great way, the illustri they illustrated it later on in the lesson was that you don't have to think about walking, your legs just going to do mm -hmm. what they normally do. So since you're not thinking about it, your mind is free to think on God. So right. some people do it with, during walking. I know for me, it works for me because that's my time when I kind of feel like I'm in tune with nature. I'm, I'm one of the guys that like nature, and I uh, enjoy just the, the beauty of just outside. Right. So when I'm out there in that element, some people doing it when they cut grass on the riding mower. Mm -hmm. Whatever it is, man, I'm telling you, he can come and be right with you in the middle of whatever it is you're doing, but you have to find what that is for your alone time. The only reason why I wanted to say that was because the title of this lesson is What Is God Doing? You will never know what he's doing if you don't first build a relationship with him. Right, right. Have a relationship with him, you have to find a way to get quiet enough to listen and hear him because right. he doesn't always respond to us as soon as we ask, but you have to be able to be still long enough that you can hear him. Uh, you know, you, sometimes it may take you quite a while, yeah. but that don't mean that you necessarily have to sit in the closet until he speaks, but, it. but it just means be in a state of receiving, mm -hmm. be in a state, a mental state, of a mind frame that you are in the uh, the, the state of, of, of trying to receive a word from God. Uh, and that may go on throughout the day. You may be at work throughout the day still with your mind focused on him. You can be focused on God while things are going on. And as long as you have that relationship with him, God can come and talk to you while you're at work. You know what I mean? So, that real quick. Go ahead. Jump in there. Well, uh, um, to, be, to piggyback off what he said, that's why the Bible tells us to stay sober line and vigilant. You have to find yourself in this routine of remembering the purpose in your life, mm -hmm. okay? It's to fulfill the God's will, okay? So what you're doing is you stay and concentrate mentally. No matter what you're doing in life, no matter where you're working at, no matter the, the, the thing that you have to accomplish in your um, day, your, your daily routine, you must remember the number one priority is to make sure you are in line with God's word. And that's going to keep you right where you need to be. Amen. 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 Um, I, right now, I'll get ready to read the script that support uh, my particular day, uh, my devotions of lesson day one. 
So it says 1 Kings 19, verse 11. It says, go out and stand before me on the mountain, the Lord told him. And as Elijah stood there, the Lord passed by. And the mighty windstorm hit the mountain. It was such a terrible blast that the rocks were torn loose. For the Lord was not in the wind. After the wind, there was an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, there was a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, there was the sound of a gentle whisper. When Elijah heard it, he wrapped his face in his cloak, and he went out and stood at the entrance of the cave. And a voice said, what are you doing here, Elijah? That was pretty awesome mm. to me, because there was that, you know, mm. all that chaos, the storms, thunderclap, all the things that was going on, and you can just adapt that to your life, Corona, uh, yes. Storms, we got yes. Laura, yes. And, you know, we got Marco, all of them trying to enter into the Gulf and, yes. and hit Louisiana and the surrounding states. But that is noise. God is not in there. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. If you caught that, he's I not like in that. there. I like that. But, mm -hmm. but after, while all that's going on, he you're going to hear once you get quiet. You got to get quiet. Find a place to just quiet. Right. Even that's while right. all Corona is going on, while you got to clutter, while you're trying to find mm -hmm. a job, while you're trying to figure out right. what you're going to do about your unemployment, that is the noise. That is the clutter. God is not in there, but when you get quiet, find that small, still place that God can talk to you and you'll be able to hear his voice. And uh, I doubt that was a great, 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 great Ooh. illustration. On yeah, that. Right. Uh, great, great That's illustration, right. man. So, yeah. so moving on, man, we're going to move on to day two. Day two. It says, ask. Yes, sir. When you talk to God, what are you asking for? A lot of times we get frustrated because we're Totally focused on something. Asking God for answers or to do something for us. And it seems as if he's quiet or silent. Could it be that the problem is not with God, but it is with whatever we're asking for? True. God's top priority is drawing people closer to him. So if you're desperately seeking an answer to some big question, what's going to happen? Where should I go to school? Should I date him or her? God certainly wants to give you wisdom and help answer those questions, but perhaps he isn't going to immediately whisper in your ear and clear the, I mean, hear the, the clear and simple answer you're hoping for. Maybe he's going to lead you into his word for the answers. Mm -hmm. Yes, he does. Mm -hmm. Or have some, someone in your life speak some wisdom or encouragement. Mm -hmm. It comes through that too. Yes, sir. Or draw you to spend more, more and more time with him as you wrestle with issues. Spending more time is good. Yes, sir. Also, sometimes we miss the voice of God because we're not asking for what God is most concerned about. Mm -hmm. That's good right there. Yes, it is. It says, don't mishear me. God loves you and absolutely wants to hear everything that's important to you. But again, God's greatest priority is to draw is drawing pe other people closer to Him. Say so, again, so, say, so, say so what God, 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 <laughs> His His greatest priority in our life is drawing other people. He's want to draw you and I right. close to Him. You're about to read another story of Elijah where he. Ask God for something huge. A massive display of fire from heaven. Not a small prayer. But what I want to focus on is the reason Elijah prayed this. He desperately want, wanted God's power to be seen by the massive group of people who had utterly forgotten who God was. Mm. Sometimes mm. in our life, even we forget who God is in our life. Mm -hmm. This prayer of Elijah was all about seeing other people come back to God. That's right. And that is a huge factor in why God gave 
the answer he did. Mm -hmm. When it comes to what you're asking God, the priority um, is the priority of God's glory being put on display, or are you, you asking God to make Himself known to your friend, or to draw you closer to Him, or are you or are all your prayers focused on what will make your life more comfortable? If you if you feel like God is being idly quiet. Lean on him and check the substance of your prayers. For your for your asking for things that put on the spotlight on God, you're much more likely to hear or see and answer. Well, the story of Elijah. Let, let's let's talk about that. Oh man! Uh, when, 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 when he oh, man. was talking about he was talking to the prophets of faith. Mm -hmm. And he was uh, he set up a, a altar. Mm -hmm. He set up a bullock and an altar. And he uh and, and, the, and the prophets of Baal set up an altar and a bullock on the other side. And he said, Who whoever uh is the real God is gonna be the God that answers by fire. Show off of the gods. It's, it's, <laughs> of, it's the show off of the gods. Woo! So the thing about it is, is that the thing about it is Baal. Bear them, bear, bear's uh, prophet set up their little altar then, mm -hmm. and Elijah set up his altar. And then the thing about it is, I think Elijah got a little cocky with him a little bit. Because he can't hear you. He can't hear you. He can't hear you. He can't hear you. And then the thing Man. about it is, Elijah poured water all over his altar. Mm -hmm. And then, he, then when he finally called on the name of the true and living God. Yes. God answered by fire. Mm -hmm. It said, it said, and then it said, let me, I got ahead of myself. It said, the prophet of Baal got so mad they went to cut themselves and stuff mm -hmm. about the situation yes. because they got oh, mad because right. Baal wouldn't answer them. Wow. That just lets you know that wow. if you serve any other God but the true and living God, yes. the God is the only one that will answer you. That's your right. Life. Oh, yes. Let, sir. let me get in there for a quick second. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, but, you know, we are on day two and it's, so the first first day was about listening. Yeah, listen. And then the second was about asking. asking. And it's asking, asking. specifically yeah. with an intent focused on God getting glory from him. That's right. Uh, so you gotta keep in mind that the pastor did say that it's not that God does not desire, don't want some of the desires that we want mm -hmm. for us, but they're not his top priority. That's right. His mm -hmm. top priority is something that right. draws people close to, close him. to him. So mm -hmm. when we pray and we include that in our prayer, and that is the Motive behind that prayer, actually, kind of picking back up what Reverend Jackson was talking about with uh, James four and three. Um, when when, you, when we praying with that That's motive right. in mind, That's right. then God gets glory from that. Y'all gotta keep in mind, man. God is a very jealous God. That's yeah, right. And yeah. He's a very proud God, and He wants you to give Him His glory because He's deserving of it. That's right. He's deserving of. It. He's not one of them guys. Because I swear, He used to always tickle me, and I found it very ironic that. This big creator, this great God of the universe of all, really, really, truly <clears throat> needs and expects and wants our worship. That's right. From it, mankind. It the <laughs> so you so you'd be like, so what I'm trying to say is that you would feel like, you know, man, God's gonna be like, he modest about it. He's okay, you, know, you know, I did, it ain't no big deal. No, no, that's mm. not really the way his character is. Right, <laughs> right. That's right. When he gets glory out of it, the, in the word that they use, um when Pastor Water was just reading, he said, if you're asking for things that put the spotlight on God, that's right. not you though. Because when it's you live right. about you, I'm not saying he doesn't do that's individual right. things for you personally, but yes, you realize they're talking about priority. Sometimes he's not going to answer you in the timing that you want because that is not a priority to him. That's right. But if a priority is that your household be reconciled with Jesus Christ, yes. if it's that your child, or your son, uh, come back into the way that he was taught to God, right. so that he's able to reconnect with Jesus That's Christ, right. and sometimes those are the ones that God That's considers That's as it. priority. Yes, but you're just asking for the promotion on your job. Well, not that the promotion is not important, but what is the promotion going to bring? Is it going to bring more income so that you are able to bless the kingdom of God? That's right. If it's Woo. not, and if it's just for you, that doesn't mean you'll never get That's it. Right. It's just that it's not on its list right. of top priorities. Right, so right, right. what you're That's asking good, right. for yeah, and how you are asking it always matters to him. It's not that he ignores you. It's just that it's pushed down. It's almost like if your child came to you and they were talking to you about a million things, you're going to naturally, with, without talking about it, 
your mind already breaks down the things that they told you that was right. important and the ones that was just something they wanted to say. Mm -hmm. So you think about the things that are important, not that you disregarding the, the small things, but you know some of the things that they just told you were things that required your utmost attention That's right. and they required your attention immediately. The mm -hmm. things that was something that you can put off, you're going to put off. And that's the same way that God is. It's not that he doesn't hear your prayers. It's not that he doesn't care about those little personal, individual right. things yeah. you want. But sometimes God is always a God that acts on his own time. That's mm -hmm. right. And he's always someone who already knows what you need. You remember that's last right. week, sometimes we don't get the things that we ask for because God doesn't feel that it's something that we need. You feel you need it. He doesn't. Yes, sir. And sometimes... We don't get we don't get our prayers answered because the word the, the word says simply we're not his. And we're not his. You're in the job. That's all. That's the hard part. That's real talk. I know you are like. What do you mean, Pastor? We only watched this two weeks ago. You and I talked about that. That's right. Because for some reason, why he don't answer the prayer? That's all right. Now listen, I ain't gonna say it's nice. But if Therese got a group of four kids out there, and one of them his son, it's possible that he probably gonna really listen to the one of his son. That's right. Disregard another three. Right. But if you he may do these things out of the kindness of his heart, but they're not required because and he's not obligated because that's, that's right. extra. So what I'm trying to tell you is, first of all, you got to realize who your father is. That's right. And you just think just because God made you that he's your father, but that does not right. mean that. Right. Uh, he's your creator. He's the yes. creator of everything yes. on the earth, but he's not the father of everybody here. That's right. Yes. And uh, you can, but we can always change that as long as we got breath in our bodies. That's we can right. change Correct. it at, mm -hmm. at any moment's notice if we accept Jesus Christ. For, as our personal savior that's and right. believe that he died on the cross for us but he rose again if, but that's the starting point of it though yeah. but but many times we offer up prayer to someone who's like man who are these people talking to me mm -hmm. I, don't, right. <laughs> yeah. I don't know them and you know you're like what you mean but right. that's really the way God looks at it because when right. you hear the word just you probably don't really understand exactly what they're saying God is so just that he's the fairest of all what fair mean it means that you won't, he won't blame or give you any Blame for anything that you didn't do, but you're not going to get any credit for anything that you didn't do. That's right. Meaning that when they come for judgment, you're going to be judged fairly and most just of all. And it's only going to be on the deeds that you did on this earth and, the, and your heart and your soul. And you hope that it's connected with Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Because believe it or not, it's though he, even though he created us all, he will be able to say, depart from me. <laughs> That's right. For I do not know. I do not know. He can say that. Man. It seems like he can, but he will be able to say that. Woo, that, that. That's bad. That's worse. That's worse. Than Scripture you. just came to mind. It's worse than you. It says in um, Matthew, the seventh chapter, and the twenty-first verse said. It says, uh, "Men." It says, "Whoever." I mean, whoever will say, "Lord, Lord," shall not enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who do the will of my father, which is in heaven, says, Men will say in that day, I cast out demons in your name. I did signs and wonders in your name. And he'll say, and he'll turn around and say to them that I never knew you. You never want God to tell you yes, yes. that he never knew you right. in his life. Because the thing, the thing about it is, is that we could do everything and we could do everything to where we get in the good life of the right. situation. But we want to live our lives to where God is getting the blood. That's the right. Situation. Yes, sir. Pastor, yes, sir. before you uh, go to your scriptures, I just want to acknowledge a few of the viewers. Um, thank you guys for tuning in. Carlton Connolly, Miss Eva Adams, uh, Veronica Ridley. Um, I want to read a couple of comments real quick. Um, Reverend Jackson, he's been on it, man. He said, John 5 and 14, and this is the confidence that we have in him that if we ask anything according to his will, mm -hmm. he heareth us. That's and right. Don't please don't please do not overlook that pronoun he that's of right. his will Mom. Right. his will you know what I'm saying and that's the key that's right. then then he here with us and that's that's what we're kind of getting at today that's he right. has mm -hmm. to get glory from it and it got to be something that draws people closer to that's him right. when you pray all right. right go ahead on uh, pastor all right is uh First Kings 18 chapter in the 36th verse says, And it came to pass at the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice that Elijah the prophet came near and said, Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, let it 
be known this day that you are God and Israel and I am your servant and that I have done all these things at your word. Hear me, O Lord. Hear me that this people may know that you are the Lord God and that you have turned their hearts back to you again. Then the fire of the Lord fell and consumed the burnt offering and the wood and the stones and the dust and it licked up the water that was in the trenches. Now when all the people saw it, they fell on their faces and said, the, the Lord, he is God. The Lord, he is God. What Elijah did is put himself back and he upheld God. This is, this is what we got to do. The reason why that prayer went through like that is because it, Elijah didn't make it about Elijah. That's right. He made it about God. Mm -hmm. See, when, when you sin, you sin against God. And you have to face the penalty of death. Right. Okay. Because of who God is, Elijah wanted to um, show the people who turned their back on him, who forgot. Like, we go through a lot of things in life, right? And we forget. We, 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 we're, we're children of God. But what happens, we seek and, and turmoil. And the devil, he, he try to talk to us. And we begin to follow a more wicked way than a righteous way. So what happened, our elders, the, uh, your, your, your grandmother, your mother, whoever, they praying for you, hoping that God uh, touch you and, and get you right because of the uh, temptation that you're walking into. See, what we got to do, we can't put what we go through before God. We got to remember, even though I'm going through all this, it's still about God because Jesus died for, for, for the penalty of death. Now, listen to this. Don't you think that's uh, far the most greatest, the most outstanding sacrifice that you would ever do? Huh? You can't top that. You can't beat that. So that's why it should be second nature for us. So when we pray, let's make sure the prayer is for God will to be done. And if it's, and if you satisfy with that, then just telling yourself that you are in line with the word of God. Because what God desire you, what your desire is going to be what God desire you is and his word for you. Amen. That's real talk. That's real talk. Real talk. You know, you ready to move on? Yes, sir. Day three, man. Day three. Expecting. 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 What do you expect to happen when you pray? Hmm. Do you expect God to answer? Hmm. Do you expect to get exactly what you ask for? Or if you're, or if you're brutally honest, do you expect nothing much to happen? Hmm. Do you approach prayer more like a wishing well? I'd be cool. It'd be cool if you got your wish, but you know you're probably just wasting a penny. <laughs> I think this is an unfortunate trap we can fall into when it comes to prayer. If you go through a rough season or a prayer that didn't go your way, or maybe you've been trying to hear from God for a while and He just doesn't seem to be answering, it can sometimes shake our expectations of what God might do. But God is always working in our lives, always answering prayers, even if we're not in the way or the time timing we would like. He is alive and active in our lives. We just need to reframe what we expect God to do. Real fast. He is a spirit, okay? Jesus, that's how he uh that's how he talked to us through through a divine circuit. Through inspiration, look, if you're not connected to God, if, if you're if you're putting yourself before God, expecting this, expecting that, you're setting yourself up for a trap. See, right. the prayer needs to be um, fully in line with his word. See, his word is the power which manifests in our life so that we can walk through those areas that we seek it, right? So this is what this is what I, this is why I said that you will think that he hasn't answered the prayer. But the prayer is already answered through the demonstration of your of your of your moments of breathing because you're able to uh, dict, uh, decipher whether okay should I continue to do this or continue to do that because of His Spirit which is in you you still have your freedom okay. so that means God is still working in your life. Amen. Amen. 
If I can be really transparent with you, I fall into seasons where I stop seeing God at work in my feet. It feels like he's not hearing me. It seems like all my prayers go back with a big no. That's because the, the, your focus is on your selfish prayer. This is not a selfish lifestyle. Jesus wasn't selfish. See, once you really connect with him, your prayers is going to be what his spirit drops in your system. See, what happens is we allow our selfishness, our flesh, to alter our way of thinking. Now we're saying the prayer ain't getting through. God ain't doing that because we don't got off track. Listen to this. It gets discouraging. But eventually, I snap out of it and start praying. Mm. God, show me what you're doing in my life right now. Mm. I then commit to writing down everything I see God doing. Every time I notice him at work in my life. Instantly, these lists fill up. I find myself filing pages of a, filling pages of a journal with lots of little things and sometimes big things that I see God doing. This, you really hear this. See, what it is... You're still, you're connected. Yeah. Okay? You you haven't left the uh, connection flow. See, you have to know this. God will let you know. He will remind you. He will not keep nothing good from you. If you're seeking him truthfully, his spirit will enlighten you and reveal to you those things which you're seeking for. But the thing is this. You must remember this is about him, not about us. As we pursue him, he give us the things that we want and need. But the attention is on how can we glorify him? That's how that's how it works. And and as you as you go through your day to day obstacles, you will see yourself in a, in, a, in a and you'll be working in in, in a uh, in a level of strength where you know that it's not it's not nothing that you that you earn. This is something that's divine. See, this is the process that we we miss. We, we expect it to come in a certain way, but it don't because our selfishness has focused on us. Right. <clears throat> Did God suddenly kick his activity into high gear because I prayed? No. no, no. He's been working like this the whole time. Right, man. The whole time. Okay. The problem was me and my expectations. Right. I either expected him to do it exactly to do exactly what I asked for in the exact timing I wanted it. Or I let my faith get shaky and I honestly didn't expect him to do anything. God, uh, John, in, in, in first John, uh, in, the, in, the, in the last chapter, the fifth chapter, he is trying, John is trying to tell us the confidence that we can actually receive and trust in God. See, once you know that God is God, and Jesus is the son of God, and the process is real, it's all true, what's going to happen, it's going gonna, it's gonna to enlighten your spirit. You're going to know that, hold on, wait a minute, God hasn't left me. Why would he do everything he did? The prayer is answered. I'm declaring it right now. I just got to stay walking and keep my faith in him and not waver. Right. See, what's going to happen is, as you walk, you don't see that prayer right now, but you're growing. You're getting stronger because you still trust in God. Mm -hmm. Listen, uh, both responses are a mistake. If you expect God to work in your life, you absolutely see him working in your life. You know God. You got to know it. Tell yourself that. Tell yourself that. Okay. You just have to keep in mind that he is God and you are not. Mm -hmm. His action may not be what you would have wished, but they will always be with your best interest in mind. And what they just said is this. You may feel like it should have been this way. Right. But God will place it in another angle. But because God did it, once you get in line with that, you're going to bless somebody. It's not just about us. We get blessed to bless people. That's right. And, and it's, and it's going to be it's going to be massive. And, the, uh, and, 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 and this is this is this is I love the scripture. Hebrews 11 and verse six. But without faith, it is impossible to please God. Mm -hmm. It is impossible to walk with God without faith. Yeah. You cannot sit here and say, uh, God, I'm walking.
walking with God, but you don't believe in his power and who he is and what he can do. Right. You got you got to trust that. All right? That's right. Okay. Let me go back. But without faith, it is impossible to please God. For whoever comes to God must believe that God exists and he rewards those who diligently seek him. Now, this is a mind strategy. You can't sit here and say that, oh, I trust God, I believe God. But your mind is not putting the pieces together to convince your innermost thoughts that this is true. This really happened. So you can open up a wave of inspiration from the kingdom of heaven. You got to tell yourself, this is real. God is real. He had to do something in your life. Something had to happen in your life for you to know, I couldn't have done that. No, I, I, this just happened. How did this happen? That is then when you've witnessed the manifestation of the Holy Spirit in your life. Amen. I, uh, I just wanted to say something about that real quick. You got to keep in mind that this particular plan, this is not one of the, what they were called in some of the old Baptist churches, the hooping and hollering. Uh, sermon. This is a teaching sermon, and it's it's really involved. It's required to help us understand the character and the makeup of God, mm -hmm. and how to go about praying. Uh, so sometimes in many of our churches, uh, they don't break it down in a way that we able to take home anything of substance. It was exciting and it was entertaining, mm -hmm. and a lot of times we don't have anything that we can retain from that particular message. This message is one of the ones when you really just got to dig into it and really just read to understand. Right. You ask for understanding. So what it's pretty much saying is that the word, if you want to know about God's character, just remember the word is where it's at. It tell, tells you everything about God, who he is, what he's done, what he's going to do. Mm -hmm. if, but you got to believe in the word first. That's right. You got to believe the word is real. You got to believe God is who he said he is. So if you, like I said last week, if you don't believe that, then nothing else matters that I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. But if you start right there, then you got to remember that this plan is teaching us how to actually pray. Two big things that I got from that was, for one, you got to ask yourself, is my prayer drawing other people closer to God? And the second part of that is, does my prayer bring glory to God? Though you might say, well, how do I see myself in that? Well, you got to remember that you are divinely created. For the purpose of God's glory in the very beginning anyway. Mm -hmm. The only reason why you find yourself drifting away from that is because of the sins of the world and our fleshly desires. Right. But you were already created to naturally worship and give gl glory to God mm -hmm. from your very essence. We get away from that because of the sin of the world. So when we try, when we, when we reconnect with Jesus and we, 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 we rediscover our divine purpose again, then you have to understand that if you back to being in the divine element, mm -hmm. we back to being divine, we want to do the divine purpose, not our own, mm -hmm. then also remember that your prayers need to be divine prayer. They need to, they, you can't have a divine purpose without Boy, that's a divine good. prayer. That's the good. divine prayer lines up. That's good. So first of all, you find your purpose, your prayer is going to line up with your purpose. But that's when it's divine. Uh, before, before we reconnect with Jesus, we are lost and we are selfish mm -hmm. and we still going to find moments of selfishness yeah. because we are human and we have a flesh there's always trying to win. But well, we've talked about this before, and I'm glad that they keep coming together. Mm -hmm. The more you feed your flesh, the flesh will dominate. Yes, sir. But if you feed your spirit man more, your spirit man will dominate. Will it, right. will, it, will it erase all negative thoughts? Will it erase every doubt that creeps in your mind? No, it will drastically minimize and reduce them, though. And at some point, you'll get to a point where that is a very small, small part of your, your thinking. When it's mm -hmm. negative and doubtful, you won't, right. you won't think like that. Mm -hmm. So the point about the prayer, the key points was, this is this whole lesson is strictly about understanding the character of God. And when we pray, what are we praying for? What are we expecting? If you if you lined up your purpose though, then your prayers are going to line up with your purpose, and they're going to be divine, and people are going to get glory. That's right. Automatic. That's right. Let's keep that in mind. If you not, if you have a divine purpose that you have established for yourself. And it does not have anything to do with helping other people. Then that is not a divine purpose of God. Of God. Right. It, anything that God gave you as a divine purpose, and it's not gifts, because gifts help you achieve the purpose. Talents help you achieve the purpose. God gives you gifts, talents, and interests to achieve His divine purpose for your life. So if He's, if it's not involved in helping other people, or mm -hmm. like this let's said, bringing other people closer to God. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying that it's not heard. 
Not saying that he won't respond, but it's not a top priority, and he's going. He may delay it, and that's the point we're trying to make. So don't be dismayed if it's delayed. Ask yourself, did God get any glory from this prayer, right. and did it bring other people closer to God? Um, I would like to uh, just uh, dive in um, on on the lesson. Um, I always tell uh, the people in my congregation in my church. I said you always have to. Uh, come to God with a spirit of expectation. Mm -hmm. uh, whenever you want something from God, you have to expect that God can do just what He said He's gonna right. do for you in your life. If you go to God and you expect and you uh, and you expecting Him to do something, but you not expecting Him to answer in return, then why are you why are you uh, going to God? Correct. Why 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 are you uh, Expecting God to do something for him when you ain't expecting something in return. Right. So the thing about it is, is, I always say that if we come to God empty, empty ourselves out, and God will fill us up. It says it has a song that says, "Fill me up till I overflow." I want to run over, mm -hmm. but I want to run over so my life could give you glory, Lord, not for my life to be pleasing to myself. And I say, and I say this all the time, and this is the scripture for our church said. God is looking for us to let our light so shine before men that they may see our good works and that God will get the glory, that it would glorify our Father which is in heaven. So the thing about it is we shouldn't do things that we could get the glory out of the mm -hmm. situation because the, the word of God also says that you have your reward right then. Right, that's right. That's so, right. so the thing about it is, is that when we do things for God and, and to God and with God in our life, we do it that he get the glory. And I and I, and I want to do this before I let it before I let it go. It's an acronym that I use. It's it because you 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 both were right. When you are in God, it's not selfish. Mm -hmm. So the acronym I use is joy. J O U. It says Jesus. Others and then yourself. Oh, wow. I like that. I like that, man. I like that. I like that. I like that. I like that. J O what, man? That's awesome, man. Oh, yeah. awesome. Um, without further ado, I think y'all kind of got that. I'm hoping you guys did. We got a lot of comments. Uh, Reverend Jackson, I see my cousin Robin King join us. Thanks, cuz, for joining. Uh, Veronica Riggins said, Yes, so true. Uh, Lawrence Jackson, Reverend Jackson said, Crucify our flesh daily. Oh, yeah. And he also said that if, if we ask doubting, we will not receive nothing from the Lord. Lord. Amen, right. amen. Right. I'm so glad I got day four pre-surrender. Pre and before I even read anything about that, just think about it for a minute. Pre. pre. That's a prefix already. That's right. The root word is surrender. It's saying before you surrender, pre. Prefix. It's that pre-surrender. Pre so, so this is one thing I took from that, and I'm just going to say this, and then I'm going to start reading. It says, this is you speaking to God in your prayer. This is you pre-surrendering. God, before you say a word, my answer is yes. Huh. Huh. <laughs> I'm just telling you right now. <laughs> now, that, now hey. we're going to get into that. We're going to get into that. Man, you held that one. You held that one. We're going to get into that. that oh, yeah. That, that, that's, that's what oh, prayer, yeah. that's how you pre-surrender. You already got his full attention that's right. when you started off like that. I mean, don't you think that that's going to make his ears perfect? Yeah. Just oh, think about that. God, before you say a word, my answer is yes. Now it's got right. some some things about that. That's, that's, that's brave. Oh, it's brave because you don't. Because yeah. sometimes you don't know what God will put you out on that. Yeah. But sometimes right. God gives you some things that you be wanting. Can you actually accomplish? That's right. God, why you give me all? But but what you are saying is, God, I have faith in you that you already have designed me that's to do whatever you're working on. He said, "Show right. confidence in yeah. me, and I will mm -hmm. reward that." Yeah. Woo. Listen now, y'all. Listen. It says we like options. We like to know what we're getting into. We like that sense of control that comes from considering a proposal mm. and deciding whether or not we want to go with it. We do. We really do. That's the whole idea. You're getting ready to get some work done at your house. You get bids. You know, you get estimates, yeah. quotes, and you want to compare that at the end of the week, and you're going to decide to go with one of the different contractors. That's what we like. And for most areas of our lives, this is a good way to operate. It's wise to consider your options and carefully choose the best course of action. But when it comes to hearing from God, we need to pre-decide. Listen at that. Hold on. No. First of all, when I said but, that already let you know it had something right. come behind uh -huh. it. It said, but when it comes to hearing from God, that's when this is, that, that whole first paragraph that I read, that's when that is irrelevant. Mm -hmm. 
Mm. You don't, this is the time when that's not important or you don't want to use that philosophy. That philosophy works for almost everything else. But options, we get to choose, decide. We want to see what you're going to say. We get, ask another person to come over. We see what they're going to say. We look at it all over it, and then we can make our best choice. But this one says that it don't matter if God won't say, I want to charge you 40000 for that particular project you want to get done. You don't know what he's going to say. But you already chose your contract. That's right. There's no need to even do the little bidding process. So listen, they said, but when it comes to hearing from God, we need to pre-decide what our answer will be. Huh. God, before you say a word, my answer is yes. You don't understand what kind of sacrifice that is. It says when we approach God Jeez. from a mindset of God, please show me what you want me to do. And then I'll decide if I want to do it or not. That's not a recipe. That's a recipe to not hear very much from him. Mm -hmm. Again, in the first illustration when I said about like contractors coming over to give you a quote on something that you want to get done at your house, you go through all the different numbers and you compare. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the week or end of the couple of days, then you decide on somebody. But if you use that same mind frame when you come to God, listen to what it says. If you just, it says, if you have the mindset of God, please show me what you want me to do and then I'll decide if I want to do it or not. That's a recipe to not hear very much from him. We, yeah. you living yes, you cut yourself yeah, you off. Know, you cut yourself no, short. Ain't me even talking to you. You, you already yeah, yeah. told me you like you. Shut, <laughs> you done said already what you ain't gonna do. Right. What you think you gonna do? Then I already give you the power. My, 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 my. I ask you to do. So it says we can hear from God and see what He's up to. So much clearer when our attitude is this: God, before you say a word, my, my answer is, is yes. yes. That sounds scary. It does. I'm going to let you jump in there. <laughs> um, before I even read, go ahead and jump in there. Right Man, there. that right there, be, because of God before you, I say, God before you say a word, my answer is yes. That's just like me. And I right, heard he building a new house. He know this contract and company by, uh, by, by what they say. He also see what they done. Right. Okay? So, it, 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 so what happens is, when they pull up and, and, and show interest in, in building his house, he's going to tell them this. Look, go ahead and y'all go ahead and do it. Tell me the price later. Right. Because right. you trust them. Right. He right. knows. Right. See, God, God does too much. He, he's a great God. So what it is, yes, when we do that yes. and when we make that yes. action right there, that show God we got confidence in Good illustration. That's, that's almost like you telling all the people, hey, you know what? You don't need coming over and being on it. I already know what my yes. body's going to do. I'm, I'm satisfied with the work he's done in the past. Right. And I'm expecting that he's, and you heard what I said, I'm expecting mm. that he's going to do what he's always done. And that's come through. Yes, That's right. the kind of confidence that God says that's that right. you ought to have. Right. So it's a pre-surrendering. That means it doesn't matter what he asked me to do. First of all, if he said I can do it, I can do it. You yes. know what I'm saying? If he said you're going to walk on water and you're walking on water, don't question it after you start right. walking. Just keep walking. So man. sometimes you'll get in the middle of it in life too, and you'll be like, "Man, I can't believe this is me." And I remember where I was yesterday. Mm. Like you question, you kind of, you don't mean Jeez. no harm, but you kind of doubt. Like you act like you're surprised of what God can do for you in a short period right. of time. He right. can move mountains. He still does big things. Yeah, yeah. But Say you have that. to recognize those That's things. Right. Yes. Like early on day one, when he was reading. Sometimes you have to even write down to yourself. Yeah, All you got to do is take a few minutes and write down to yourself the things that you see God still doing. Right. Even while all these things are going on around us, yes. he's still doing stuff. Right. And if I just want to spew off a few of them now, I could. Right. I mean, right now I'm talking to y'all. Yeah. And I'm live. This That's is right. not a recording. That's this right. is live. So that yes. means I'm still here. That means I'm still breathing. I've never been sick with COVID-19 or coronavirus, right. nothing. None throughout the pandemic. You understand what I'm saying? I'm self-employed. Never yes, had a Lord. problem paying my yes, bills. Lord. The Lord has provided regardless Thank of that. Jesus. I left Walgreens two years ago, have not looked back, not one day. So even while all these things are going on, God is still providing. He is still working. He's still answering prayers. We have to learn how to pray to God. Mm -hmm. We really need to learn how to pray to God. Let's right. move forward. It says, remember, go back to this. It says, remember you, your attitude needs to be God before you say a word. My answer is yes. Mm. That sounds scary. What if God asked me to do something really difficult? That's the real question. Uh -huh. What if he totally changes my plans? Stuff that you had planned. Yeah. I know many pastors that said they were on their way to doing something else with yeah. And God touched their heart right. and told them, hey, this is where you need to be right now. I, mean, I heard it a lot, man. I've heard it a lot. Man, I'm I, I, I don't even, in, in preaching sermons, 
I had this sermon picked out <laughs> for this particular Sunday. God said, nah, I want you to go this certain way. Right. And when he said it, I go the way he want me to go. And then the thing about it, when we go where he want us to go, then we'll get the results that we're looking That's for. That's right. Amen. Mm. Amen. Cause this, I'm going <laughs> real quick. Real quick. <laughs> okay. We'll, why are we afraid? Why do we think we can't do it? Well, yeah. it? Think about this. Now, we were sinners. And Jesus came to take, to take that responsibility up of death. The power of God, his spirit worked through Jesus. Okay? Mm -hmm. Tell me this. Death, that's the worst thing, right? We can't cheat death, huh? No. The worst thing ever is what? Death. You can't beat death. You dead, you dead, right? right? God strengthened Jesus with the power, and he overcame death. Right. Tell me what you can't do. Right. That's right. That's right. The power of God, that's why they said my answer is yes, because of the Fact in knowing that the power of God raised Jesus from death. Amen. Amen. To bring it into a natural fix. Jesus. We've talked about this illustration before too, but if you had a baby boy, one year old, and you had him on top of a bunk bed, and you asked him would he jump, he's going to jump. Because he trusts you. Ooh, that's good. He trusts you. He he oh not going he's never he's not going to look around and wonder if it's all right to jump because he's not falling yet. And the reason why he's not falling yet because you showed him through time that you're always there and you caught him. So the reason why he can jump off the top of that bunk bed willingly and openly is because he has confidence in his father. And that's right. you. So what he, he never asked how high from this side right here, Daddy, where you gonna be at when I jump? Uh, you sure you're gonna hold on? Man. Cause I'm getting a little bigger now. You can catch, you stick, you can still. No, he said, you said jump. My answer is yes. That's, right. That's God always wants yeah, us to have yeah, a childlike yeah, faith. Yeah, yeah. Uh, remember, okay, listen. It says that what if God totally changes my plans? Yep, that happens. But do you really believe that you know better than the one who not only sees the future, but also created you? God knows you better than you know yourself. Every time I've argued with God, or felt like he was taking my life in a direction I wasn't sure I wanted to go, and that happens. Yeah. I've been so grateful in the end. You gotta trust him. That's it. It always seems to work out better than if I had just gotten my way in the first place. Mm. To really hear from God, to see what he's trying to do in your life, you must come from a place of pre-surrender. Yeah. The issue is not what might be asked of you, but who is doing the asking. That's right. Again, as a natural father, you ask your son, will he jump? It's not about the jumping. It's about who asked him to jump. So if my daddy said, will I jump? I know my daddy has never failed me. Right. I am going head first. That's right. That is what God is asking us to do if we really want to experience the true uh, the true realization mm -hmm. of what answered prayers looks like. Uh, it says, God is so good. God is good. He's so good. He loves us more than we can fully understand. Whatever he asks you to do, even if it's really difficult, it is absolutely going to lead you somewhere better than you imagine. That's right. You want me to say that again? It said it is absolutely <laughs> going to lead you somewhere better <laughs> than you imagine. You, imagine. you can yeah. say yes with confidence before God has even spoken a word. Huh. That's the kind of absolute trust God is looking for. Mm. And we can, we can see and hear him so much better. When that is the condition of our hearts. Jesus. The condition Jesus. of our hearts. So, man. I'm going to give these guys a second, but I wanted to say one thing. Two things. <laughs> Jesus. Jesus. Remember, whatever he asks you to do, even if it's really difficult, it is absolutely going to lead you somewhere better than you have imagined. But you also have to examine the condition of your heart when you ask God for something or when we need to hear from God. Is your heart in the condition of. No. What David said. Is your, is your heart in the condition of whatever it is you need me to do, God, my answer is yes. God, before you say a word, my answer is yes. If that's not yeah. the condition of your heart, yeah. when you ask God for something, and you're not yes. in a pre-surrendering condition, that's what he's right. talking Jesus. about. It's already saying that whatever it is you have for me, 
I, I no longer want to work for my selfish needs. I no longer want, no longer want to have a career that is unfulfilling. Right. Lord, I want to work in the, the career path that you chose for me, the right. one that is going to bring right. people closer to Jesus. How can right. I bring people closer to Jesus on my job? God always going to open up a way for you to bring people right. closer to Jesus, even on your job. And when you pray, and you pray specifically for the glory of God, to be achieved and reached, and also to bring people closer to God. God, it has ears that perk up immediately. Right. But if you really want to understand that attention, you say, God, before you ever say a word, my answer is yes. Go I got a uh, song, man, uh, uh, by Shekinah Glory. It says, listen to the word it says, will your heart and soul say yes? Will your spirit still say yes? says, there is more that I require of thee with your heart and soul. Say yes. So the thing about it is, is that God wants us to, to, to surrender our all to him. It, said, it also has a song that says, uh, all to Jesus I surrender. All to him I freely give. I will level, love and trust him. In his presence, daily live. I surrender all. That's what God wants us to do. He wants mm -hmm. us to surrender our all to him. And, and, and it means, what it means, it means it means giving up your life to him. Now, I remember in, in Romans uh, 12 and, and, and 1, it says, I beseech you, death of brothers, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Amen. Amen. I Amen. surrender all. I'm sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> Horde said three minutes ago, uh, pre-surrender. That's right. Okay. To get that pre-surrenderous position, okay, David had sin against God. He went to God with a repentant heart. Asked God to uh, wash him through it. He said, wash me through it, through me, from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. Why? See, what happens is, when you don't get that, your heart is not cleansed. You, right. you ain't clean. You can't even see God That's the right. way he is. That's right. So what happens is, you can't pre-surrender yourself because you don't have no confidence because sin on the pride you from God. Right. So what you have to do, you have to go to God. This is how we get that pre-surrenderance. And God just gave it to me. I ain't know about no pre-surrenderance. So this ain't nothing I know. I just, God gives oh, it to you. When you, when you in your life, when you praying, when you know you need something in your life, you go before God and tell God to cleanse you. Mm -hmm. He said, "Create in me a clean mm -hmm. heart, O oh God, and renew a right yes, spirit Lord. within me." Mm -hmm. Cat, listen, you got to do that because what's gonna happen is you're gonna be free. From the um, penalty of sin, you're not gonna be um, 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 uh, you're not gonna be um, um, strapped down by the uh, by the uh, by, really? by your wrongdoing. See, what happens is, what happens? The devil tried to use our mistakes for condemnations, right? So what Jesus did, Jesus came so that we could be free from that. So what happened? Let's pre-surrender ourselves before God just by simply. Going to him with a pre-prayer before an ultimate prayer. Go to God and make sure you cleanse. Make sure you see God the way you pose to see him so that your confidence can, can, can enlighten him. That's glory. That's giving God glory. That's, that's a good feeling. Great, great. Yes, great, Lord. Great. Uh, I'm going to read a couple of scriptures that support uh, this particular lesson. And, uh, and, you know, I know this Please is a little bit longer than... The ones from last week, but it's two reasons. One of them because we started and then we had to start over. And other ones, they had five days, but it's almost over. We got one more day right. to do. And uh, so y'all bear with us. But Proverbs 3 and 5 says, trust in the Lord Sir. with all your heart. So trust. Trust in the Lord. Have faith, confidence yes. in the Lord. Yes. Do not depend on your own understanding. Right. That's why you don't, you can't believe that he's asking you to do certain things because it's your own understanding. It says, seek his will. His will in all you do. Mm -hmm. And his will, his glory, he got to get something from that. Mm -hmm. And he will show you which path to take. That, that means he's standing at attention. He's That's ready right. to show you and point mm -hmm. you in the right direction because you have already pre-surrendered. Right. You condition your heart in a way of knowing that I'm expecting. You're ready to listen. And you're asking him the right way. So that's amazing. 
a wonderful, wonderful man. Mm -hmm. I hope it's helping too. Jeremiah 29 and 13, it says, if you look for me wholeheartedly, you will find me. You can break down wholeheartedly a lot of ways. I don't have time to define it by words, but I'm telling you, wholeheartedly is not just a word they threw in there. They could have used several others, but it said, if you look for me wholeheartedly, Jeez. you will find me. That means sincerely, okay. utmost, with utmost respect, confidence. Um, mm -hmm. When you look for me um, with, with the utmost sincerity, uh, your heart is already conditioned. You know what I'm saying? You are already in a pre-surrendering condition. Right. When you come to me in this manner with an expectation manner of not doubting what I will mm. do. All of that. When you come to me wholeheartedly, you will find me. But when you don't come to me wholeheartedly, meaning you kind of doubting, kind of throwing a penny in, in a wishing well, saying he mm. probably not going to do it no way. Nine times out of ten. Not he's nine times. Not, time, not no nine times out of ten. Uh, he's not ten gonna times do it. out of ten. Right. He's, he's not going to do it. Do it. Not do it. <laughs> Ephesians 3 and 20 said, Now all glory to God. Again, he has to get glory. Remember that. You, Who is able through his mighty power. That's how you are able to do things that seem impossible. Mm -hmm. Your understanding is impossible. He mm -hmm. said, He is able through his mighty power at work within us, the Holy Spirit, to accomplish infinitely more than we might ask or think. That's why you can do things that you know you can't do alone. Because he's you're doing it. First of all, to bring glory to God, and you're doing it through his mighty power you, that Jesus. is at work within you mm, that's right. to accomplish infinitely more than you might think that's or ask. Right. That's, that's amazing. Thank man. you, Jesus. Awesome, man. That's day four. Uh, we're going to go ahead and go to day five. And uh, we're we right. going to wrap it up. This is good. Focus. Yes, you, really got to go. you got to have focus, boy. You got to have focus. It says this. It says, have you ever tried really hard to focus on something for a while? Why is that so hard? I don't know about you, but I have no trouble focusing for hours on Netflix binge. Or spending all day on one of my favorite hobbies. But sit down in a quiet room and try to focus on what God is doing in my life. For 10 minutes, it's a battle. Is it just is it just me or it, it can't be just me? But here's the problem in our hyper distractible culture. Hearing from God's required focus. We we also we already talked about how the burning bush. And the talking donkeys were one off event. Of God's, if God speaks in whispers, we need to find a way to be still, quiet our minds, and focus. So here are a couple of ideas you might try to get your heart and mind to be still before the Lord long enough to hear or see what He's up to. <clears throat> Says this the devices. That's these. <laughs> mm, that's these. <laughs> that's these. That's these. Uh, yeah, this mm. this the device. <laughs> Wherever you go to be alone with God, mm -hmm. make it a screen free environment. <laughs> Anything screen free, phone, tablets, uh, uh, TVs, etc. Amen. Mm -hmm. It says anything that beeps, buzz, <laughs> or alerts you should be turned off or better yet, left somewhere else. If you use your phone to read the Bible, you know, like you you know, like you you are right now. Yeah, we are right now. <laughs> wow. <laughs> That's true. Put it on airplane mode or do not disturb so that mm -hmm. the text social media alerts on constantly trying to drown out God. Mm -hmm. Keep moving. Try moving. It says some of us are restless creatures and try and, and trying to get a physically fit still can be distracting all by itself. Trying to be physically fit can be a distraction all by itself. No. And trying just to physically sit still. Sit still. Can oh, be yeah. distraction. Be distraction. By, by all, all by itself. And then it says, 
I've had some incredible moments with God while out on the walk or hike. Did you say that earlier? Mm -hmm. You don't have to focus that hard on walking generally, but it mm -hmm. can give your body something to do that frees up your mind to talk with God. Mm -hmm. Amen. Get something, get you something to do. It says isolate. If I'm trying to go really deep with God, and I think there's even a possibility of getting interrupted, it messes with my ability to focus. If that sounds like you, plan your time and location very carefully. Uh, maybe you have to get up earlier to avoid your little siblings. Maybe you need to sit yourself in the closet of your room to hide out. I don't know what it is for your specific situations, but choose a time and a place where you can avoid interruptions. Mm -hmm. This list go, could go on and on, but if you're having trouble being still and focusing on God, it's going to be very difficult to heal from him or see what he's doing in your life. Try a couple of those tips above and if you stick with it even just a few days I can almost guarantee guarantee it'll start getting easier. Mm -hmm. As you and as you make a, a regular habit of hearing from, from God and seeing him at work in your life your faith is going to grow like never before. And, I, and I'm a living witness of that because uh, I'm actually doing uh, some things right now to where uh, I'm getting closer to God. And when I put the things down that God told me to put down in my life, I feel myself as with a closer relationship uh, with, with God. And my, my secret place is I got a, a walk-in closet in my house. My wife got a walk-in closet, and, uh, and, and I got a walk-in closet. So I got my own little space where I could go in and write, write in my little journal, write down some things. And, and just like uh, the story on wall room, I, I hang them on my wall. And, I, and, 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 it, and, it's a, and it's a way for me to uh, get, in faith, get in the face of God and ask God to, to uh, give me direction in my life, mm -hmm. to ask God to... Uh, to, to, to have a closer relationship with him, to really get in, in, in focus with God. And by, by doing that, God has blessed me to, to have a, a better walk with him. He mm -hmm. blessed me to have a, a higher calling on my life just because I have uh, the ability to focus on God. So whatever you're doing throughout your week, throughout your day, Give God some of your time because when you give God some of your time and you focus on Him, your life will be in a better place. Hey, I, I want to do something real quick that's interactive for the viewers, and you'll be able to read. They'll just be answering as you read in a second. But in this last lesson that he was reading about uh, focusing, he, he gave us some tips on some things that yeah. we can do. Uh, he was answering, I don't know how he knew that I was getting ready to do something like this, but he kind of answered what his method is about isolating. Mm -hmm. So the three categories are ditching your devices, right. try moving, you know, some people can't sit still, they right. have to do it on the go, right. and isolation. So for, for those who are watching now, this is just a fun interactive type of activity while we continue on with the show. Which one of these categories do you feel that you fit in better? Right. Are you one of those people that need to ditch the devices because they just distract you? Uh, your phones and stuff that just distracting you from getting close to God, mm -hmm. getting quiet with God. For some people, that may not be an issue. Right. Uh, they may be a little older school and phones that never really just did nothing to them like they mm -hmm. do for some of the young folks. But are you one of those people that need to ditch the device? Or are you one of those people that has to do it on the go while during a walk, yeah. riding a bike, move. driving? You got to move around. Mm -hmm. Or are you one of those people that has a secret place in your home or yard yeah. that you go to for isolation? So the three categories, just I just want y'all to just comment so we can see what you guys think, and I'm gonna read some of them. If you're one of those people that need to ditch the device to focus on God, put ditch the device. Mm -hmm. If you're one of those people that need to say, I need to be moving, I need to be on the go, 
when I'm getting quiet and still with God, put right. try moving. Mm -hmm. And if you're one of those people that need to have a secret place, a closet, or somewhere in your backyard that's a special place for you to go and talk with God and hear a word from him, then put isolate in the comments. I, and we'll come back to him in a few minutes. Go ahead. All right. It says uh, Psalms 46 and 15. It says, Be still and know that I am God. I will exalt, I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. God says he wants us to be still mm -hmm. and know that he is God. And uh, Matthew 6 and 6 says, But when you pray, go into your room, and when you have shut the door, pray to your Father who is in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you openly. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's what I do. And uh, the thing about, and the, and the, and the, and the, uh, Another one is in uh, Exodus. It tells it tells when he when the children of uh, Israel was trapped uh, by the Red Sea and uh, had the two mountains on each side and Pharaoh was mm -hmm. on behind. He told them to stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Yes. Amen. 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 Brother Jerez, you have anything you want to jump in on there? Uh, just thank you. The key is really. Uh, making sure that you you keep that uh, line open, mm -hmm. you know, because uh, we can't have no cluttered spiritual veins. Now, how can we really uh, get gain, you know? So, I have a, like, this is what I do. I, I have a closet. I have a room. And um, sometimes, I sit in my car and it gets so powerful at times. You can be at a uh, at a family function and tune everybody out That's right. in a deep thought. See, the more you do it, the stronger that um, area of your life um, develops the strength to persevere no matter what's going on around you. But God really deserves our time. Yes, he does. He do, and we should give it to him without second guessing it. Right. Because what he did for us, nobody knew, nobody, I don't know nobody that would do what he did for us. Amen. So we need to give him everything we can. We can. Amen. Um, before we get ready to conclude today's lesson, I just gonna do a real quick recap. Um, today's caption, the topic was, what is God doing? Many of us wonder that. Um, but to know that, you have to understand the word. First of all, we gotta believe God is who he says he is in the word. Right. And then when you do that, the word will give you the character and personality of God. Mm -hmm. So today we was talking specifically about getting uh, in a small, still place where we're able to hear from God. But it started off with listening first amidst all the chaos that's going on. But right sure. now, 2020 has been a very chaotic year that's right. for our standards. That's it's right. been so disruptive. But at the end of the day, there's still been blessings that have been that's going right. on in the yes, midst of it all. Mm -hmm. So while all that's going on, God, instead of him screaming over the crowd and over the clutter and over the noise, he whispers gently. And we have to get to a still quiet place that's to right. hear that. Mm -hmm. um, then we have to learn how to ask. Maybe the problem with us not hearing from God is not about certain, excuse me, not hearing from God about certain issues. It's not about God or not with God. The problem is not that. It's whatever it is that we're asking for. Mm -hmm. right. The top priority for God is are people are you drawing more people to him? That's right. And is he getting any glory from that? That's right. Mm -hmm. uh, and then on day three we were talking about expecting. We have to go with expectations that what it is That's that right. God said he's gonna do, he can do and will do. That's right. He's able to do exceedingly above all. So you have to set your expectations and remember that uh when you set your expectation, God has already done so many things, he's doing things, and he's got things that he's yet to do. But you have to believe that he can do all things uh, when you first set your expectations. Mm -hmm. uh, the word teaches us about the character and the personality of God. So you should definitely have an expectation when you go to him in prayer, and you shouldn't be throwing a penny up in a wishing well, <laughs> hoping, yeah. uh, like I always like to say, wishing on a star. Right. You don't have mm -hmm. to wish on a star. Right. You can have expectations as long as your prayer is lined up with your divine purpose. Yeah, right. Your divine purpose will allow you to have a prayer that is going right. to give God glory and that is going to bring other people right. to Jesus. Uh, Pre-surrender. 
Go to Jesus, go to God with a pre-surrendering yeah. mind frame and a condition of your heart. Uh, what, do, what does that mean? It's saying that, God, whatever you ask, my answer is yes. God, whatever it is, before you even say a word, my answer is yes. So that's what you go to God with before you ever start your prayer. Try it. I promise you God will be at uh, attention. You will have his undivided attention that's from right. the very onset of your prayer. If that's you right. say, God, before you say a word, my answer is yes. That means you are totally submitting to the will of That's God. Right. Mm. You are saying my will is not the will of God. Right. If my will happens to align with what God's will is, then so be it. But I am not going to God in prayer for myself first. That's right. I'm going to God in prayer mm -hmm. for what he has for me, yes. for, for his divine purpose. Mm -hmm. And then whatever else filters from that, it flows down in that order. But it's the key is order, priority. Remember that in this day five, I was just focusing being able to focus, finding places that we're able to find that still place for us to actually have that communication, that one-on-one -on -one relationship, that conversation with God where we're speaking to Him and we're giving ourselves a long enough time yeah. to hear back from Him. That's right. You got to understand, you got to be willing to hear back from Him. And that might not mean you get an answer right away. But when you're waiting on God to respond, that don't mean you have to be still sitting physically in that place you were in the closet. It just means that you are in a spirit of receiving. That's right. That means once you leave that prayer room, that closet, that special spot in the backyard that is just for you and him, he may have not answered you back there, but you have still left there with a spirit to receive That's his right. word That's whenever right. he so forth, so whenever he feels the need to actually share that word. So that was the key thing, man. Um, I want to read a couple comments. I see a couple people. Mr. Eva Adam said. I like to sit on my porch and give God my private time. That's great, man. I, I asked a couple of you guys um, which one of those fit you better if you was a person that needed to ditch your devices. That is a very distracting thing. I'm not going to lie. We in a social media world. You do have to ditch your devices. Yeah. But for me, it seems like my my quiet place uh, where I seem to get the most one-on-one -on -one conversation with God where it's back and forth is when I'm moving, walking, driving on a long ride, no music is on. And I'm just in tune and intent with nature, and I'm letting him talk to me. Mm -hmm. And uh, some people need to isolate totally from people and from surroundings right. to get there. So that's all that was about, man. But uh, th this part of the show, we're getting ready to conclude. I give these uh, men an opportunity to give any last seconds of commentary that they would like to share on today's lesson, and then we'll conclude the show. Uh, I just, I just love God for who He is in my life, and. Uh, I'm glad that I have a personal uh, relationship with him. Uh, I, I, I just like to say, man, that he's able to do it seasonally, abundantly, above all, that we can actually think of him according to the power that works on the inside of us. We have to realize that we have the power of God that works on the inside of us. Amen. Yes. Um, I would like to add with that, um, as, as we continue, remember to Stay humble and to allow your patience to work because at the end of the day, God is going to see you through. I don't That's care right. how terrible it looks because this is the one thing we have. We have confidence in God knowing that he is the ultimate ruler, the creator of everything. And just stay focused and continue. To so walk in humility, trust God, and I promise you, everything will be all right. Amen. Amen. Um, I, I hope I hope we got something from it. I did. Uh, yeah. I know I know the panel did. I'm hoping you guys did. If you would, please tag and share this to your Facebook pages. If you also would do us a favor and like our Real Talk with Martin and Garden Facebook page, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. We upload these uh, particular live broadcasts on our YouTube channel each each Monday and later part of the evening. So uh, without further ado, man, it's not about being like, it's not even about how people feel. You, as long as you make sure that whatever you say, you bring passion, you show respect, but most importantly, you keep it real. And that's Real Talk Kingdom Discussions, yeah. episode 18. It's in the books. Thank you, thank you, thank, thank you. you. To your presence and your own.